The scientist gives a boots on the ground conservation worker a map of where the best places to restore are. They just go and do it, right? Well, on this episode of Conservation Hackers, I talk to Mark McConnell from NQ Dry Tropics, and he talks about how he uses science to influence decisions, but also the role of human psychology. I'm Dr. Chris Brown, and I hope you enjoy the episode. Okay, uh, my name's Mark McConnell. I work with uh, NQ Dry Tropics, based in the Burdekin here. NQ Dry Tropics is an NRM, so we act as an intermediary between a lot of groups, um, unis and uh, expert organisations. Um, we we have our foot in the door with a lot of people doing on-ground work and we do a lot of on-ground work ourselves so mm-hmm. we would provide a, a valuable insight and um, also a, a trusted connection with our landholders. Okay. So my role is as Merry Officer so that's monitoring, evaluation, reporting and improvement. So most of what my work involves is land condition and biodiversity assessment but also a lot of water quality improvement and uh, we rely on detailed model data to uh, inform our management decisions. So that mostly relates to uh, land, um, land condition cover, uh, slope gradient, um, as well as uh, expected se- expected sediment yields from various uh, subcatchments. Yeah, and so you're saying you go out, you know, pretty often to talk yep. to landholders about um, doing land remediation. So how do you decide where you go when you're doing those? You know, which land? How do you decide which landholders you approach? Um, it's quite complicated. Um, the models we use inform our decision making, but it's also based on uh, data which is collected directly on the ground. So mm. we've um, commissioned a couple of different reports. Um, Griffith University have, have been very generous with their, their expertise, and uh, they've basically given us a spatial distribution of the, the gullies throughout the, um, the key um, subcatchments of the, the Great Barrier Reef. Mm-hmm. Um, we use that. Um, in combination with our social data that we've collected, so people who are more likely to want to participate in these projects, um, the land condition of those sites, which is um, data we've collected on the side, which we share with a number of other organisations, and then uh, work from there. But it's a um, there's a lot of moving parts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And this one more question: you yeah. you were telling me earlier that one of your frustrations is you sometimes feel like the management is 20 years behind the science. Yep. So what would you say to young scientists to? Um, help them get managers up to speed with the latest science which we really need to address um, you know, rapid climate and environmental change. Yes, be, be patient. Um, a lot of the issues that, that I deal with, um, I, it's primarily in the environmental area but most of my issues I deal with are related to human psychology. So um, pe- people are complex, complex animals and uh, I guess Take the time and, and be patient to, to try to communicate, work, work the angles and try to find ways. Yep. Cause, um, yeah, but it, it is a challenge and it's, it's, um, it, it is hard. Um, like when I left uni, I had that grandiose ideals of how easy it would be to, to shake things up, but yep. it's, uh, it's a bit of a slog and just uh, keep chipping away. If you enjoy this episode, please give us a thumbs up on YouTube. And don't forget to share us with friends and colleagues. It's the number one way we can reach more people. If you want to hear more from this show, hit subscribe down below. I'm Dr. Chris Brown, and this has been the Conservation Hackers Vlog.